I'm Bob Resselman, and welcome to Bright Ideas TV. Bright Ideas TV is where we meet once a week to discuss a bright idea that's made a difference in the world. We talk for about 15 minutes. This week's guest is Izzy Azari, the co-founder of StackDriver. But before I talk about Izzy, I need to talk about our sponsor, DevOps.com. DevOps.com is where the world meets DevOps. And if you know, okay, or if you know or you don't know, this is the 10-year anniversary of DevOps. So there's a lot going on. People are having a lot of retrospectives. And one of the retrospectives that's going on is in an article by one of DevOps.com's writer, Chris Tazi. And the name of the article is What Comes After DevOps? Two Possibilities. And he discusses two possibilities. So I recommend you go over to DevOps.com and take a look. Now, uh, let me introduce Izzy, Izzy Azari. Izzy Azari is the co-founder of Mabel, an ML-driven automated testing software company which he founded in 2017. And ML stands for machine learning. Previously, he was the co-founder of StackDriver, an intelligent infrastructure monitoring company. StackDriver was sold to Google in 2014, where he joined as senior product manager. Previously, Izzy held senior leadership positions in large tech companies such as EMC and VMware. In addition, in addition, and then there you go. In addition, Izzy serves on the board of directors at Ops Genie and CSP. He's a a guy you know. This guy's done a lot of work. So please join me in welcoming to Bright Ideas TV, Izzy Azari. Welcome, Izzy. How are you doing? Great, Bob. Thank you. And uh, it's excited. I'm excited to be here with you. I'm excited that we're all here with you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good place to be today. And yeah. I need to point out to the viewing audience that we're outside our general broadcast time, which is 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time. It's 8.30 uh, a.m. here on, in the um, Pacific Daylight Time. And me and my dog woke up for this. So this is going to be a great episode because Izzy, you're the man. Thank you. So, so Izzy, l- let's start at the beginning. Tell me what the bright idea is stack driver. So uh, how did you come up with it? I mean, when did the light bulb go off? Yeah, so um, my co-founder and I, uh, this is the, you know, that was the first company we founded together and Mabel's the second company. And for these companies, what we do is we try to look at for um, big shifts happening in technology. Uh, we're boring kind of DevOps developer infrastructure type guys. And so what we saw was a big shift happening in terms of um, how companies were deploying their applications. And they were going for, from, kind of uh, infrastructure that was running locally or in a cloud uh, internally to the public cloud. And so we said, wow, that's a big shift that's happening from an application deployment perspective. Why don't we go talk to people who are actually deploying those applications and see if they have any problems? And if there are problems, let's see if we can solve them. So um, we created a survey and we sent that survey out to about a thousand people on LinkedIn. And we, there was, the biggest question was, um, what's the biggest pain point you have today with your application running on AWS? And the biggest pain point we got back was um, the support I get from AWS is really tough. It's not great. And we said, well, that's not a problem we can solve. Um, the second uh, pain point they had was uh, when my application goes down on AWS, I don't know what's causing it because I can't actually put an agent on all of these machines and databases and hosted services I'm using from AWS. And we said, well, maybe there's something there that we can solve. And that was kind of the, the genesis for StackDriver. Huh, that, that's great. So, and um, let's, uh, let me ask you some nuts and bolts question, questions. So, okay, you got the idea. And uh, do you remember what year that was? Yep, that was uh, 2012. Um, okay. I, was, I was with my co-founder just doing a bunch of research. Uh-huh. And so you had the idea in 2012. And when did your first viable product uh, hit the streets? Yep. So we started the company in uh, May of 2012. And by September, we had an alpha product that we were starting to show customers. Um, It was really ugly, (laughs) really rough around the edges. Um, By April of the next year, we were in beta uh, with hundreds of customers running on AWS. Huh. Huh. So, and was it just you and your co-founder actually doing the coding and all that stuff and putting it out there? Did you get, had help with other people? Yeah, we, um, we, we built a great engineering team. So um, our first engineer was a DevOps uh, professional at HubSpot, which was running uh, in the cloud. Our second engineer was uh, a data scientist uh, who was from EMC. Um, and our third engineer was a new hire from uh, Northeastern. And so um, that was kind of the core team we built initially. And then we built a, a broader engineering team around that. And those are really the, the developers who helped build the, build the first solution. So, it's, it's, so it sounds for me, to me that you have a, a, a real appreciation for engineering talent. 
We do. We do. Um, yeah, I'm not a coder. Uh, I'm the person who kind of interacts with a lot of our customers and my co-founder is uh, really the product guy, um, but doesn't really do a lot of coding. So we know we have to find talented engineers. And so that's always uh, the biggest focus when we start a new company. So one, one, one of the questions I get asked in my, in my day-to-day life and through emails is what makes an attractive um, candidate? Like, you know, you get an engineer and you're not a coder. And this is, to me, this is really hard technology. I think it's really hard to do. So a bunch of people come in. What, what, do you, what do you look for? I mean, how do you qualify people to come and work on this very important piece of software? Yeah, so we always first start with culture. Like, is this person a great cultural fit for us? Um, one of the things we look for is, uh, is this person trying to focus on solving a problem or do they actually want to, um, are they more focused on title or office or, you know, seniority and that type of thing? And we, we focus on people who are trying to solve like great hard problems. Um, the second thing we, we look for is people who have kind of strong technical skills, right? Like, are they actually a strong engineer? Um, so we do coding uh, tests and we bring them in for, uh, you know, evaluation and things like that from an interview process. Um, uh, our hit rate's usually about, I'd say, 20%, 20 to 25% of the people we actually interview, we, we hire on the engineering side. So that's mm-hmm. um, where we kind of, where we find the fit. Huh. So, um, so, so we, we, I'm here, I hear a cultural uh, fit a lot and about um, uh, solving problems. Um, one one of the things that really impressed me is I was reading reading through your reading through your paperwork about you. See, when I said you know stack stack driver, how'd you start? And you said, well, this isn't rocket science, but to me, it, it's te- it is rocket science. This is hard. <laughs> stack driver is a is a big technology that does big things in a big way. For their listeners that don't that don't know, stack driver. I use stack driver. You go out and I use it under. Um, uh, a Google Cloud, where you go out and I want to monitor what my services are doing, and at least tell me, give me some log information, which is a little tricky uh, yeah. under GC directly. And this allows me to do it, and my you know my world is a safer, better place. So to me, that's hard. That's hard yeah. to do that. But you're saying no, it's not rocket science. At least that's what you wrote down in your. In your uh, yeah, program. I mean, so um, what we did with with Stackdriver, I think, was was pretty straightforward. Um, there is a bunch of data that you can collect from AWS CloudWatch. You know, this is data that's accessible and people use it every day to monitor, you know, their different cloud um, uh, AWS services. And so that's kind of core infrastructure data. Um, then we uh, kind of, in addition to that, we allow customers to put an open source agent called uh, CollectD mm-hmm. on, their, uh, on their servers running on AWS. And then you get a lot of host level metrics. Mm-hmm. Um, and from there, you can have add-ons to uh, CollectD, which uh, you can support things like Redis or Cassandra or uh, Nginx or other load balancers or things like that. And that allows you to pull kind of application component level metrics. And when you put that together, you see the health of your, uh, your infrastructure running on AWS. Mm-hmm. Um, combine that with, uh, you know, really great visualization so you can actually visualize what's happening in your, in your application and then alerting, right? Like mm-hmm. really fine grain alerting. Um, those are kind of the core components uh, we built. Um, certainly there was more advanced things we built on top of that, things like anomaly detection and, and better intelligence. And today Stackdriver uh, combined with Google has things like tracing and debugging and log analysis. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot there, but the core of it was, was actually pretty straightforward for us to, to get off the ground quickly. Wow, that is, that's really impressive. So um, let's just talk about a bit of history because I'm always interested about people who take the leap because as I, I read in your bio, you know, you work for um, um, EMC, which is not a small company and yeah. VMware, which is not a small company. And did you decide, did you come, did you decide to uh, start pursuing Stackdriver while you were working as an employee at one of these companies? Or did you just say, hey man, I'm, I just got to do this? Yeah. So after VMware, I said I was ready for a startup, right? VMware uh, was a big company, public company. And so I went to a company called Acronis, um, which was a private company, which, you know, coming from a public company, you're like, oh, it's a private company. It must be a startup. And uh, I worked there for three years, but we were about a hundred million dollar software company. And what I realized was this is not a startup. (laughs) Right. This is definitely not a startup. And so I actually left Acronis uh, in 2012 and joined Bain Capital Ventures as an executive in residence. And uh, my my goal there was to find a startup, a true early stage company to to jump into, um, but you know it, it was hard to find exactly the right fit. You know, in my hometown, and uh, a company Bain wanted to back, and so um, my co-founder at the same time was also thinking about what's next in his career, 
And so the two of us just started tinkering together. We would meet every morning for coffee around seven o'clock and work until 10 and just do a whole bunch of research. And so um, Stackdriver kind of came out of that research that we did where we talked to all of these DevOps professionals running in the public cloud. You know, we had a lot of phone conversations with them, a lot of emails, a lot of surveys. And uh, so Stackdriver uh, kind of went from there. We raised our a $5 million Series A from Bain, uh, Bain Capital Ventures. Um, we were lucky enough to have them support us. And you know, obviously from there, we started to grow the business with, uh, with customers. So you, 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 this wasn't, let me say, this was a startup, but it wasn't impulsive. You, no. I mean, you, re you really did your homework. We did, yeah. We were really thoughtful about uh, making sure this was the right market to go after, making sure people would pay for this product, making sure um, there was no legacy kind of products that you know people would uh, kind of uh, renew or could refresh and things like that. Um, you know, what we found were people were just uh, basically using all these open source tools to try to get at the answer of like what's happening in my application. And they were using all these CloudWatch metrics as well as a separate kind of database or visibility layer. And we said, well, there's got to be a better way, right? Um, when applications are, uh, you know, just dynamic, moving up and down, and resources are ephemeral, um, there's got to be a better way. And so Stackdriver was that kind of better way for um, these DevOps professionals um, mo monitoring their applications in the cloud. Wow, wow. And so now you've gone on to Mabel. Tell me a little bit about uh, Mabel. Yeah, so um, you know, my, my co-founder and I left, uh, left Google after about three years uh, in January of 2017, and we were ready for something new. And so being these kind of boring DevOps infrastructure type, type guys, we said, all right, let's go focus on the developer market. And we went and surveyed um, software teams. Uh, what, one trend we had seen was uh, like CI, CD and continuous delivery. And we said, well, it uh, seems like a lot of businesses are adopting that. Let's go like test that hypothesis. And tr lo and behold, yeah, there was a lot of people um, adopting that. And then we said, well, as you adopt continuous delivery, uh, what's breaking? Like what doesn't work anymore? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people said there's been a lot of innovation on the, uh, the workflow side, like with Jenkins or Circle CI and CodeShip. There's been a lot of innovation on code repository and um, with GitHub and things like that. There's been a lot of um, innovation with collaboration tools and, and Jira and tickets and things, but testing uh, had no innovation. So uh, people were still doing manual testing. Uh, people were using Selenium, uh, which was built two decades ago for um, testing their applications and it, things were just falling apart. Um, and testing uh, ended up being the bottleneck that prevented companies from shipping software faster, which is the whole point of continuous delivery. And so we said, well, let's go see if we can solve that problem. Uh, and so Mabel tries to solve that problem of uh, automated testing for uh, companies adopting continuous delivery. So were there any lessons that you learned doing Stackdriver that you could, that you could and did apply to Mabel? Yeah, absolutely. So with Stackdriver, we started off with a couple of uh, key kind of customers that we found. We literally cold called these customers to say, can you help guide us uh, in monitoring your application in the cloud and feature development? And we did the same thing here. Uh, we were lucky enough to have a couple of like really early companies that helped guide us in terms of the features uh, that we would develop and uh, what they were looking to get out of a, a product in the segment. Um, another thing that we uh, didn't do at Stackdriver, which we know we should have done here, which we did, was also focus on brand and um, really come up with a brand that's uh, kind of disarming to, um, to testers out there. Uh, because we're using machine learning to do this, people are kind of skeptical and afraid sometimes. And so we tried to really create a, a brand that's um, kind of disarming and just open, open to customers. And that's, that's what Mabel uh, is all about. And that's what we did early on as well. Wow, yeah, so, yeah, so it sounds like yeah, uh, focusing on brand and uh, you know, uh, keeping the customer and keeping the customer and finding the customer and making sure you're taking care of the customer need and doing your homework, yep. doing your homework. And uh, I, I, I want, I think that's an important lesson for any startup to learn is you really have to, you know, do your homework, uh, do your homework. Cause this is a, is a business unless, unless you're doing something that's not. Uh, and if it's a business, you can uh, do your homework and present yeah. at least yeah, we, a viable case. Yeah. You have to do your homework. I mean, we raised a, a $10 million series a with Mabel uh, from CRV and, Clearly, we had to do our homework to convince them to invest in us. And, um, you know, the market's big. There's a huge pain point out there. There's, you know, no real innovation happening. And so, uh, you know, putting all those things together and then obviously crafting something that uh, could work for the customer to solve their problems was a lot of the homework we did early on. Great. Well, this time has just 
gone by fast. That was the fastest 15 minutes I've ever had. Well, the second fastest 15 minutes I've ever had. <laughs> but it was a fast 15 minutes. Anyway, this has been a fascinating conversation. And I look forward to uh, uh, following up. And if anybody, uh, any listeners out there want to get in touch with me, or is, is there a way people can talk to you if they, if they want to? Can they write sure. you or something? Yeah, my, uh, my email is izzy, I-Z-Z-Y, at mabel.com. Uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn and would love to talk to you if you, if you have any questions. Okay, great. All right. So thanks for joining us. This has been Bright Ideas TV. And this is with Izzy Azari of uh, Mabel, formerly of Stackdriver, and he shared his bright idea. So see you next time. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.